Boys and girls, Danny at JDOD, and it's like being in a coconut shy. To my left is Richard Messick, who does stuff for economic, among other things. And we were all to talk about your past. You were involved in a very shady outfit called Danny. Right? Vantis. Not oh, Vantis was it? Oh, sorry about the same difference. <laughs> to his left is the one and only Gary Turner, who is MD of Zero UK. And to his left is Dave Terra, who is, what are you, David? Oh yeah, you run D2C and you have stuff going on with Twinfield and that, right? Because you guys are all in the accounting space and it would not have been possible to put even three of you together, I would imagine, two years ago, or maybe, maybe even less. What's going on? Richard, how active and busy is it in your space? Uh, it's, it's quite busy. Uh, I think my general overview is that there's a lot more awareness Mm. Uh, in the cloud accounting space and a, certainly a lot more interest and certainly a lot more brand awareness. Um, so there's been a lot of movement uh, in, in, in those areas. I still think there's an awful long way to go. I think there's, um, I'm not sure how it comes out on camera, but if you look at that being the accounting space, mm. there's only that much who are yeah, interested yeah, yeah. in the cloud and in that area there are awful, an awful lot of products. But I think the positive side of it is that there's a lot more uh, awareness and a lot more activity. And I have to say, even though obviously it's competition, I think it's the awareness of products like Zero, which has actually stimulated the market mm. because uh, people obviously are looking at those products, but they're also looking and saying, well, those products work very well for one level of business, but I need something, no disrespect, but something a little bit more sophisticated <coughs> or all-encompassing for particular clients, and then I'm going to look at the twin field or the economic spaces. I think that is the way that it is beginning to go. Okay. And Gary, in your space, uh, people will be aware that Zero has, has grown fairly substantially in its own territory, but I mean, you've been going like crazy, so I mean, what's, what's your current headcount? Or have you lost count? <laughs> yeah, this is, um, so we're up to 18 people. 18 now. And two months ago we had seven. So we've grown a lot in terms of headcount. Are, 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 are you outgrowing Milton Keynes already? We will be outgrowing it pretty quickly, yeah. Really? Yeah, 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 we'll probably get another four or five months and we'll need to find somewhere. Bigger. You didn't think that was going to happen, did you? That quickly, we, we, we did. We, you did? Okay. We, yeah, so we... we Planned obsolescence absolutely, in, in, yeah, in Milton yeah. Keynes. <clears throat> right. So we, we are seeing... Um, a big inflection in terms of demand sure. and awareness. Mm. Um, so I joined Zero three years ago, and three years ago there were lots of people vying for for the attention and, and trying to build credibility and build brand. Mm. And that um, has begun to um, quieten down, and there's now a smaller number of vendors that are beginning to demonstrate through market share and through um, uh, building their businesses that um, things are settling down and maturing. So we're growing really quickly. <clears throat> um, I think the first five years for us, and really only we've really only been going properly for about three years in the UK, has just been about getting in market, getting established, and building up some brand awareness and brand credibility, right. and getting those first few thousand customers on board. Yeah, and we've done that, and we're now in a set. We're now in a new phase. So we've got um, some miles on the clock. We're getting some feedback, and we understand more acutely what the market requirements are for the next five years and with that acuity and vision that we've now got it's now tuning and, and, and fine-tuning our strategy for the next five years so kind of we, we've arrived now let's roll up our sleeves and really start um, kind of cranking the handle and so we're seeing a, a quite a different um, market emerging for us in terms of scale and growth and what we're doing in it. Okay we'll get to that in a minute and what about yourself David I mean you guys have been around for a long time, but you've been through certain iterations, haven't you? So, and I think um, from our point of view, as a Twinfield partner, there's a combination of things. In that, part one part of it is is those market sort of uh, pulls that are happening that, that Richard mentioned, and there's also the fact that our company's uh, been acquired by a bigger company, Walters Kluver, and from a Twinfield perspective in the market, that's one of the big things that's lifted their um, profile, mm. and, uh, and and that's you know meant that. Um, we're all hiring uh, more people. Uh, zero is, economic is, Twinfield is, 
uh, to, to cater for the demand because they've actually got a lot of a lot of prospects on the go and a lot of customers that are getting signed up. I, I see an, an extra side to it as well because uh, although Twinfield themselves kind of focus on the the um, through the accounting profession and actually selling the product through uh, through accountants. I tend to look at individual SMEs who want who want a solution mm. of which accounting is a part, and there's a lot more people coming out there looking for a broader solution that, that you know where it needs the full business process and CRM at the front end and the like, which is why we took on a new product to, to handle those kind of those kind right. of businesses. What are these changes that you've just been talking about, then, Gary? <coughs> um, so. Uh, Am I about to hear your strategy for the first time? <laughs> this, this isn't any, any departure and, 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 and strategy for us. It's really just beginning to blossom. And that's the investment that we made building um, tools and software for accountants. Right. Um, and I think that um, for the last five years, the argument about if you're an accountant in a practice um, or a small business, the argument about moving to the cloud has just been it's convenient. It's, uh, it's economically convenient to mm. pay for something as you go. Mm. You don't have to worry about backing up your data. And, you know, the kind of generic uh, kindergarten benefits of why you should be in a software as a service or cloud product. Mm. And what we're seeing now is the penny dropping. And that, that that is absolutely with a platform and foundation benefits of moving to the cloud. But we're seeing practices beginning to realize that this is something that they, they could, will transform the way they work with their clients. It's not just a uh, nicer looking, more convenient, more polished version of Sage online mm. is a completely different value proposition mm. that can change the way that they work with their clients. Mm. And we've been banging our head against a brick wall for the last five years, having that conversation in the last year, that message is now getting through. Mm. And so we're seeing accountants coming to us and are wanting to re-engineer their practices mm. around an online model, not seeing the cloud as a nice accessory or a or something that they can work alongside a traditional on-premise model. And so the pennies dropped in the last year, I think. Richard, um, even five years ago, because you and I both come from that professional yeah, world, right? Yeah. If, if you and I are trying to sit down with the customer and say, listen, you're going to be able to run your business yourself, your books yourself, we would have had problems with that, wouldn't we? Because a lot of those systems are just too complicated and difficult for those guys to. I, th I think I think that's absolutely right. right. And, I, I, and that's I, changed. And I, I think it's changed. And I mm. think the I, I mean I agree with everything that that, that that Gary says there. I think the that the whole the, the the argument about the cloud making life easier and all of those issues was basically almost uh, an excuse for actually doing it. Mm. It, it, it. It's all changed now, as, as people say, they realize how they can interact with their client base, how you can you know, design a model, as I, I've given this example before, where within my own small practice, I have clients, for example, who only want to raise and send out their own sales invoices. They don't want to do anything else, that's, mm. what, we're, that's what they ask us to do. Right. So, within the cloud-based model, you can easily set up a, a process where that's exactly all they see and all they do. Mm -hmm. And then we do everything else. And it, it's, it's so adaptable. And the fact that you can, um, you know, I, I've joked about it before, but I, I had this client, prospective client who came to see me, he walked into the room carrying his iPad. I had my iPad, so I immediately knew that, you know, we were gonna talk the same language. And the fact that we can sit there and look at, on our iPads, look at his information, live information, at the same time to discuss the figures and everything mm. is an enormous advantage, mm. an enormous benefit. And I think people are waking up to this now. I think they're beginning to, yep. to realise it. I'd just like to chip in another thing, which is that I think for a, for a small to medium practice, in the past, they might have worked with just one product, or maybe two products, and suddenly the business model cloud and, and the expertise required Sorry. means I can actually work with many products. And so I think you'll see more you know, practices actually picking up a, a collection of, of cloud solutions to handle their clients in a way that they couldn't have done in the on-premise world.